Hi, this is Trey Pass, and welcome to my review of episode 6 of Swamp Thing. I'm a little late with this. Sorry, I had a few things I didn't do around the house and stuff. So this is the episode's called The Price You Pay. Okay, this review is going to have spoilers as usual. Okay, and like I said, I'm really digging this show, and I'm sad that they canceled it. Hopefully, I'm hoping another network picks this up, because this show is really good. The cast is good, the writing is good, and everything's good. So hopefully, maybe this show will get picked up by someone else. Anyway, this episode basically begins with Alec, um swamping in the swamp, and he's being hunted, okay, by these soldiers. If you remember the last episode, uh, Jason Woodrow uh, uh, told Avery Sutherland that he had, you know, that, that the sample of the swamp thing that Liz got had these great new properties in it, and it's probably a living creature out there in the swamp that has that, and he could capture it, that could unlock untold secrets for, you know, uh, you know, and probably make them rich, you know, and also, but, you know, Jason has an ulterior motive. He wants to actually uh, harness this thing so he can actually help his wife, who we know her. She has, uh, I guess, a form of Alzheimer's. They don't outright say what she has, but we can tell because she, when they had the conversation earlier in the season, and she was talking about not, afraid of losing her memory and losing and forgetting him and stuff. So, so we have, you know, part of the motivation for Jason, you know, charging so hard after this this cure that Abby seemingly, you know asked him for his advice about, okay, and so Avery gave him a, a piece of paper, I guess a card with some hunters' names on it, and, and we see at the beginning of this episode, they're hunting Swamp Thing, and they actually managed to even shoot him a couple of times, and then he basically unleashes holy hell on them, and they, they get, they, they're injured, but they manage to escape, and they go to the hospital, and they're raving mad about something in the swamp attacking them and stuff, and so, of course, uh, Abby's in the hospital, she's taking care of, uh, uh, Daniel Cassidy, aka Earring Zeering, who was uh, injured last episode when he was walking with you know with Liz Tremaine's you know to, to her car, and she was basically get, get, getting warned off by AB, some thugs that AB Sutherland hired her to tell her forget about her investigation about the banker that disappeared and a lot of stuff, and so he managed to try to intercede, but he got knocked over the head and and he basically got, is taken to the hospital where they say he's a you know. He had severe brain damage. He's in a reversal, irreversible coma. They, Liz, um, Abby, excuse me, Abby tells Liz that listen, he's in a kind of irreversible coma because he's not. He has, you know, his brain has been severely damaged by that blow to the head that he took. And of course, Liz is feeling guilty about this. He's saying, listen, this would have never happened, you know, if I wasn't investigating the story and Avery sick just thugs on me. And of course, you know, Abby didn't know this, so she's. You know, she's pissed off about this, and even though Liz tells her to leave it alone, she goes charging after Avery to 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 tell him that she's not afraid of him, and you know, how dare you, you know, attack, you know, attack Liz and, and threaten her father, you know, and now you seemingly your thugs attack Danny Cassidy, he's in a, like a coma, and Avery, you know, he first he's all charming and everything, but then he goes, listen, don't ever come at me this again, because next time. Despite me having fond feelings for you, you know, you'll be sorry, basically, is what he says. Okay. And then uh, that's when uh, Abby finds out about the two, you know, hunters that got basically attacked in the swamp. And she knows that it's that it's Swamp Thing, a.k.a. Alec, that probably did it. And he's probably just defending himself. And she actually goes out there looking for him. And also, at the same time, we find uh, the sheriff, Lucille Cable. She actually has a conversation with her son, Matt. Who we know has a thing for Abby, but she actually uh, confronts him and said, "Listen, I had to basically kill this guy Remy because he knew he saw you out there in the boat, and he knew that you was the one that you know that blew up the boat and shot Alec. Okay, and she had to basically murder him to keep it from coming out. And and then he's you know, and then he's basically telling, "Listen, we know you know how powerful Avery is and how he can get everybody to do anything he wants to." wants him to, and, and and she was saying, listen, I was doing this to protect you, and, it's, and they have a back and forth, and he even <laughs> goes out and jab about, yeah, at least I'm not sleeping with him, which is, and then she almost slaps him, but, you know, you know, they're, you know, you can, you can tell that, you know, she, you know, she'll do anything for her son, but there's that tension, because she knows that now he's compromised, because Avery has this on him, that he got him to do this evil thing, you know, you know, shooting Alec, and, <laughs> And blowing up the boat and stuff, so she, you know, she's worried about him, but you know, he's not listening to it, and he had storms off. And then we see, uh, like I said, uh, 
Dr. Jason Woodrow, he actually uh, comes to the, uh, we actually, we don't find this out at first, but, you know, uh, Daniel Cassidy, he's, you know, he's having like dreams, like flashbacks to when I guess he met this uh, stranger who, when he was like a Hollywood stuntman. He was, you know, lamenting his status and wanting to, to be the star and all this stuff. And this guy was making him a promise and said, listen, you finish this picture and I think I'll have something else for you, um, you know, where you can be the star. Okay. And he kind of throws that carrot out to him at that. So, you know, that's going on his mind. So we're getting more of the backstory of Daniel Cassidy, which I kind of pretty much figured out that he made a deal, basically he made a deal with the devil and he's basically stuck in this town. He can't leave this town. Uh, and that was the price he had to pay for getting to be a star, supposedly, and playing this uh, blue devil character. But anyway, uh, he gets his IV chains and you can tell that you see the new medicine going into his arm. Then all of a sudden, you know, this irreversible coma that he's out of, he jumps up from and he's literally wakes up and he's literally, you know, burning up. And Liz is there and she's, of course, stunned that he's awake and stuff. And, you know, she tries to touch him, but, you know, of course it burns. And then into the hospital comes, you know, to the room comes Jason Woodrow. And, of course, he's, you know, stunned that this guy, you know, is fully awake and his brain function is, you know, he's been fully, you know, changed and healed and he's up it and about, and he basically grabs his clothes and runs out of the hospital. And then we, of course, figure out that Jason actually, you know, because he, he goes to, to Avery Sullivan and tells him, listen, I gave him some of that, you know, some of that solution that uh, I got from Liz, but, you know, some of the sample from the Swamp Thing, and it basically healed his his brain function. He's up and, you know, he's up and functionally running around, and, but, you know, he's having sort of side effects that he's, you know, he's, he feels like he's burning up, okay? And Avery tells him, just listen, Go out and get this guy, okay? You know, you know we can use that, you know, this the statement. He has, even tells him to make a write a, a paper about it and stuff and keep it short and brief with a lot of pictures, okay? And we're going forward with this, but we, you know, we at the same time, they still have to capture, uh, you know, Daniel because he's running around, you know, <laughs> you know, unhinged, okay? And at the same time, we see Abby back into the, you know, into the, um, so he goes back to look for Alec. And, you know, she's talking and he's t telling her about when he met the stranger, which we know now is the phantom stranger, last episode, and he told him that he had to dig deeper to find out what he is. And Alex is telling her, listen, I don't know, because she's saying that she's not going to give up on him. She's going to find a cure for him. And he says, I don't know if that's going to be even possible because I met the stranger that told me that I have to dig deeper to find meaning. And he said and he feels more in tune with the green in the, you know, in the swamp than he did as... Than, than he previously did, as you know, he said he feels more basically, he feels more alive now than he did when he was human. And so, and then at the same time, we see Matt who's going out there to uh, basically search for the creature who attacked uh, those two hunters in the beginning of the episode, of course. So, Alec and, and Abby kind of split up, and you know, Matt is looking for the creature, you know, he has a shotgun looking for the creature, and he actually uh, runs up into Abby again, and Abby, t you know, is, you know, uh, is talking to him when Swamp Thing comes and basically <laughs> knocks the gun out of his hand and is getting ready to, <laughs> to put the whammy on him, and she tells him, you know, don't hurt him, and what she basically explains to, you know, to Matt that this is Alec Holland, so now Matt knows that he didn't kill the guy, but the guy has been changed into this creature, and he tells him, you know, this, keep this, she basically tells him, keep this quiet, you know, I, I want to work on cure, give him a chance to, to try to cure him. Okay, and he, Matt agrees and he goes back. Okay, of course, visibly shaken, of course. And now we also flash back to, uh, to Jason Woodrow. He's in his house talking with his wife and he's working on that, uh, the document that Avery is asking to make about the cure, this new uh, fangled medicine that's gonna heal everybody and change the world. When actually his wife comes in and tells him that, listen, I wanna go home. And he says, listen, I can't leave right now. I'm in the middle of, you know, this great discovery, I, we can't leave. And, and he's, you know, we know the real reason he's saying this is because he wants to perfect this and get the funding so that way he can give it to his wife, you know, and so to stop her, you know, her form of Alzheimer's. But she's really not feeling it, and she, you know, she's she's really just telling she don't want him to change from the, you know, from the kind man that he is to something else. Okay, and then we see a bang bang on the window, and you see it's. Daniel Cassidy banging on the window saying, Doc, you got to help me. You got to help me. And so Jason has, you know, he tells his wife to, you know, 
we go upstairs and he goes outside and he <laughs> tries to talk to uh, to Daniel and tell him, listen, uh, you've been the victim of an experimental drug and it's having these, you know, weird side effects, okay? And, you know, we'll help you, but we have to get you back to the hospital. And Daniel's not having it. <laughs> and he said, you got to help me. And he's basically literally burning up. And then you see Avery come in and, you know, he tries to shoot him and he knocks him down. And then uh, he's going after Jason when his wife comes out and sticks Daniel in the neck with a knife with a, you know, I can assume a, a sedative that renders him unconscious. And, of course, they take him back to the hospital. And at the hospital, while he's, uh, you know, while he's, you know, unconscious, we see Madame Xanadu come in and she, you know, she's talking to him and telling him that she's sorry about his fate and what he's going through right now because she knows that, you, you know, you have to go through this. You're, that's your destiny. And she said, but I want to make your suffering a little bit less. And she kind of puts her hand on him and kind of heals him from that burning that he was going through. And and then we see that his, his vitals are going back to normal. And he's, you know, he's back to normal. So that was another interesting thing that we know. We know Madame Zanadu, she knows what Daniel, you know, the Daniel made this deal with the devil and, and that he has an uncertain fate and it's tied into Abby and stuff. But he knows, so she knows that. And he knows it, so, and she, you know, she managed to cure him of his, you know, that burning sensation that he was going through, and now he's, you know, seemingly back to normal, but still, of course, stuck in the town, and whatever his fate is going to be, which ties into Abby. And speaking of Abby, uh, her and uh, Alec, they go back to his lab, and they're talking and stuff, and he's, and he actually shows her, he does this thing with his with his hand where he makes, uh, I think, kind of a rose come out of his hand while he's talking to her. And she's, at, she's looking at it, and all of a sudden, you, you know, you see her point of view, and then he, he's Alec. He's human Alec, okay? And then that's how it goes off, which is, again, again, this show is really, really good. I, I'm, not, I'm just really pissed that they, they canceled this on this on the DC streaming service. It, I think that was a fatal mistake, and I think they canceled it again because I think North Carolina or wherever it was, they would film this. I think they got cheated out of the tax money, and Warner Brothers had to wind up paying more money. And I think Warner Brothers is taking it out on the showrunners. That and may, maybe that they either they didn't fill out the proper paperwork or whatever, and and they had to pay millions more than they were supposed to, and they were supposed to get millions of dollars of tax breaks, but they're not getting it. <laughs> so I think Warner Brothers was pissed. But still, you have a good show, okay? If you want to fire the showrunner for screwing that part, wherever it was responsible, just fire them and keep the show, because the show to me is really, really good. And I just hate for them to cancel it because of that minor thing because this show is really good it's really getting good okay i just love their relationship between abby and swamp thing and the other the different characters on the show and it's all these mysteries going on at the same time it's a big oh, fascinating show definitely top quality anyway let me know what you think of swamp thing episode six what do you think of it uh, feel free to leave comments down below i have links to my social media in the description box facebook twitter and instagram i also have a link to my other channel called views and opinions please check that out check this out as well. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long. Take care.